evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to listen today to my talk about corporate social responsibility in small and medium-sized enterprises. The things that I'm going to talk about today are based on research that I undertook investigating CSR practices in SMEs from across the UK. I'd like to start with a general discussion about um, CSR in SMEs and then go on to discuss why CSR is important for SMEs, the business benefits of CSR, and actually how to make CSA w CSR work in a practical way in an SME, and also how to gain competitive, competitive advantage from CSR. So concern about social and environmental impact of businesses is an increasingly high profile issue in many countries and industries. In our globalised high tech world, businesses of all sizes are increasingly visible. People are concerned about their actions and want to know how they are run. Corporate social responsibility and sustainability are two terms used to discuss the social and environmental contributions and consequences of business. Sustainability means being able to maintain indefinitely the viability of our economies, the societies in which they exist, and the physical environment on which we all depend. And CSR concerns the behaviour and activities of businesses in terms of their contribution to achieving economic, social and environmental sustainability. Now we could spend all day discussing different terminologies and in my research many of the SMEs did express concern with the term CSR. But to me it's not about what you call it, it's about what you actually do. And in terms of the practical implications of the term, they're just as applicable to SMEs. Understanding how it applies to an individual company is what's important. In the current economic climate, you might be forgiven for letting CSR slip down your list of priorities. However, recent research shows that the business desire to be corporately responsible has not fared too badly in this recession, which we're now apparently out of. Um, this is the first global recession in which the concept of CSR is part of standard business language. And financial scandals, poor governance, climate change and resource scarcity have highlighted the need and demand for responsible and ethical business practices. In fact, in tough economic conditions, businesses will be looking for every means possible to differentiate themselves from competitors and to make themselves more attracted, attractive to customers and talented employees. Responsible businesses can save a company money or even make money rather than necessarily having to create extra costs. CSR is something that businesses of all types and all sizes should understand and address. In practice, CSR is about how businesses manage their day-to-day -day processes to ensure their contribution to society is a positive one. CSR is not an add-on to how businesses run. It is increasingly at the core of how business does business and should be integrated into every aspect of the operation. It is about very best business practice. People still associate CSR with large companies, but the economic importance of SMEs has led to a growing emphasis on their social and environmental impact. In Wales, SMEs account for over 99% of all businesses, over 58% of employment and 43% of turnover. It is crucial that SMEs play their part in meeting local, national and global targets on social, environmental and economic issues. Many CSR issues, such as being a good employer, are relevant to all businesses, regardless of size or type. And others only apply to certain sizes or types of businesses. To date, most of the discussion in academic and business circles about CSR has been from a large firm perspective, with a focus on the problems, solutions and examples drawn from amongst a small number of high-profile global firms. The research that I undertook, which forms the basis of what I'm going to talk about tonight, looks specifically at CSR from the viewpoint of UK SMEs. Exemplary companies with a proven track record in CSR-related activities were selected from a search for award-winning companies or companies whose practice has been highlighted as best practice. The use of exemplars like this allowed me to investigate individual instances of good practice which can then be built into a body of knowledge that's transferable to other SMEs. SMEs are all different, and each faces a unique set of business responsibilities and priorities. Small businesses are started for a variety of reasons that will influence the purpose and strategy of the business. 
and how it views and tackles its business responsibilities. The relevance of each driver to a business depends on such factors as attitude to risk and innovation, values, why the business was established, and the ambitions that it has for its future. CSR needs to be central to a business and its values and principles, so that it becomes less of an onerous task and more just the way we do things. For many SMEs, the personal values of the owner-manager and their desire to do the right thing drives their interest in CSR. Other internal drivers of CSR can include um, protecting and enhancing key resources, such as employees and the environment on which the company depends, adding value to products and services, and gaining an edge over competitors. Reducing costs through resource efficiency, and engaging in improved stakeholder relations. Other in internal drivers include protecting, building and enhancing the company's image and reputation, anticipating, avoiding and minimising risks to the business, anticipating costs, stakeholder expectations and future legislation, and being an attractive prospect for potential investors. Businesses may also experience either direct or indirect pressure from others that seek to encourage greater social and environmental responsibility and discourage bad practices. For example, other companies and business networks, SMEs often get encouragement, ideas and, and information with networking with other companies, as we can see from tonight's event. Access to finance, potential investors may seek to reduce their own risks and protect their own reputations by only investing in responsibly managed companies. The supply chain. Pressure to demonstrate strong environmental and social credentials may come down the supply chain. For example, some companies will only trade with businesses accredited to the ISO 14001 environmental standard. Trade unions can seek to influence company behaviour through mechanisms such as networks, <coughs> collective agreements and accreditations. Um, pressure groups. Many groups like Greenpeace and Amnesty International monitor and assess the environmental and social impact of large companies. And these mostly do target large companies, but smaller companies can still be affected by local com campaigns or those that focus on supply chain issues such as human rights or child labour. And the government, of course, it's businesses engage with government at all levels, local, regional and national, on a range of business-related issues. 